So we've got to solve this equation sine 2 theta equals cos 2 theta for theta greater than or equal to 0 but less than 2 pi. And this would be measured in radians. Now what I'd want to do here then is stick with the angle 2 theta. Okay, We could divide both sides by cos 2 theta and that would create a tan 2 theta. We'll just take a line to do that. Sine 2 theta divided by cos 2 theta equals cos 2 theta divided by cos 2 theta which is going to be 1. And sine of an angle over cosine of the same angle reduces to tan of that particular angle. So we should know that identity and so we have the tan of 2 theta is equal to 1. So when it comes to working out what 2 theta is, just take the inverse tan of both sides. So that would be inverse tan of 1. Now at this point, okay, draw a graph or a quadrant diagram. I always prefer quadrant diagrams for solving trig equations. Okay, So I'm going to draw one here. Start with 0 degrees or naught radians. It'll be naught radians in this particular example. Now when it comes to looking at what quadrants we go in then, we're looking at tan being a positive value and tan is positive in the first quadrant. Remember they're all positive in that quadrant so draw a line there, mark in an angle here and tan is positive in the third quadrant. So you should draw a line equally inclined to this horizontal here. Mark that in. Okay. If you want to know more about the quadrant rule and examples just go on my website you'll find examples on the quadrant rule. Okay now we've got that we want to look at the range of values that we require. Now we're dealing with 2 theta here. Okay so you must look at a new range here double each of these values here twice naught is naught, okay, so you're going to be less than or equal to double theta, you've got 2 theta, and double 2 pi, and you've got 4 pi. So we need to think of angles in this range. That's our new range then, so where could we get those solutions from? Well the first one will be this one, okay, this is a possible 2 theta. We've got another one starting from here, going round to the next blue line into there and that's a possible 2 theta. There'll be another two more. They'll be from starting from here, going to here and then going a full turn again. Similarly, go to the green one and turn another full turn. Okay, well if we inverse tan 1 what you should find you get if you're in radians mode okay, is pi upon 4. If it's degrees mode it would be the equivalent of 45 degrees. So we've got pi upon 4 radians and we need to keep it in terms of pi. Okay. Now we need to put the other ones down. Okay, So this one here pi upon 4 is the red one. Okay, It's the size of this little blue angle in here, pi upon 4, which means that this little angle in here must also be pi upon 4. So to get the green one we just need to do half a turn, pi radians, plus another pi upon 4. And if you do that you've got 5 pi upon 4 radians. Okay. Now we have to add a complete turn to each one of these angles. Okay, If it were in degrees we'd add 360 degrees to this but it's in radians so we have to add 2 pi to this and 2 pi to this one. So if you do that you'll get 9 pi upon 4 adding 2 pi to that one and if you add 2 pi to this one you'll get 13 pi over 4. Now we divide by 2 and we get pi by 8 and 5 pi by 8, 9 pi by 8, and finally 13 pi by 8. Okay, and they're all in radians, so I'll just put radians there or rads for short. Okay, and there you have it. 
Don't make the mistake though, a very common mistake I find people making is that when they get to this stage, 2 theta equals pi upon 4, they divide by 2, come up with pi upon 8, and then draw their um, quadrant diagram with pi upon 8 here. You will get it wrong, okay? So as soon as you do in any trig question, you inverse tan, inverse cos, inverse sine, any angle, make sure you write the full list at that point before you then go ahead modifying your angle. Okay?